Good evening, groovy citizens, and happy winning Wednesday. So right now, it is 67 degrees outside. It's kind of humid, yet there's a slight breeze, which is why I have my sweater on so I didn't have to put on an actual jacket. But all in all, today has been a phenomenal day. Now, before I jump into today's topic, let me just say this. Today is the first full day that my mom has been home. And so if you've ever had knee replacement or you know someone that's had it, you know that there is a lot involved because you have to help them get up. I believe she has to get up at least once every hour for about five minutes because you know they want you to move around because the more you sit, the stiffer you become. And so, but she's been doing great. She's been in a lot of pain, but she's been doing great. When I tell you God is good, y'all, God is good. You hear me? And I'm just, I'm really proud of her. Like I told her, you know, you just have to push through. I know it doesn't feel good. We went through this with my dad a few years ago. I think it was 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And so I know it doesn't feel good at all. I know it doesn't. But like I told her, just think before you know it, the pain that you're feeling now is going to lessen and you'll be able to move around so much better than you did before. Now, the hard part for me, you guys, is going to come and I believe when she left yesterday, the nurse said in seven days, we have to clean, you know, the wound area. Now, I don't do well with grossness, so I don't know what it looks like underneath of there, but y'all just pray my strength because, yeah. So I told my sister, I said, well, I'll let you do the first cleaning, and then I can kind of peek with one eye, you know, kind of slightly open to see what it looks like, and I'll be able to do the, the you know, do it after that, because I'm thinking as I'm cleaning, I'm that person, I'll be going, Ugh. You know what I mean? Trying to keep keep myself from throwing up because I just don't do blood and grossness. Not that it's bleeding because that, that's a bad sign, but just seeing the cut in the and in, in all that kind of stuff. So like I said, if y'all pray for me, I will continue to pray for you, okay? Now, today's topic, you all, today's topic is a powerful one. And I don't know who needs to hear this, but as I was preparing to to do my video, which by the way, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I wasn't gonna do it today just because I've had so much to do the day with my mom. I said, Lord, you know, I don't feel like doing a video. I really do not. But that little voice said, nope, do it anyway, Michelle, because you talk to other people about not giving up, so you can't give up. So here I am. But as I was doing this video, I said, you know, Lord, I don't know who needs to hear this, but I need you to listen carefully because today's topic is let it go and move on let it go and move on. And here's a quote, it's, I don't know who said it, but I like it. And it says, there is nothing you can do about the past except keep it there. Mm. When I tell y'all that thing just made me wanna shout, and that's your shouting moment right there. Most of y'all missed it, but let me tell you one more time. It says, there is nothing you can do about the past, but keep it there. So I said that to say this, whatever, has happened in your past, I need you to let it stay in the past. The problem that a lot of you all are having is that you can't enjoy the future. I mean, you can't enjoy the present, which means you won't be able to enjoy the future because you won't let the past go. The past is the past is the past. And one of my favorite quotes is by Medea. She said, your past is like your big ass is behind you. Forgive me for cussing, but guess what? We all have a tail, right? But she's right. Your past is behind you. There's nothing you can do, nothing that you can say that will ever change your past. Now, you don't have to repeat it, but you can't change it. So why keep living it over and over and over again? Let it go. Let it stay in the past. So my first quote is by Bishop T.D. Jakes, and he says, wash your face. Y'all, this will shout you. He said, wash your face is significant, is, is a significant, or I should say washing your face is a significant issue because it means literally don't let your past affect your present. It means wash everything off you that you've collected along your journey and prepare yourself for where you're going. Wash your past off of you so that it doesn't pollute your present. You would be surprised at the number of people who have ruined where they are with where they came from. Mm. Y'all, that'll shout you right there. I love it. He opens up the video by saying, wash your face. 
And then he goes on to tell saying that washing your face literally means just to wash the past off of you. Some of you are carrying your feelings on your face. That's why you ever notice how when you're out and about and maybe you're not having a good day and people normally see you smiling and being upbeat and you're walking around, your face is long, was it's tight and you look like you're, you're, you're squeezing your cheeks to keep that fart from coming out. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I know I'm not the only one, but y'all know what I'm talking about. And And people see that. And that, that, that look on your face says that you're carrying something around with you. What that thing is, I don't know. I don't even need to know. And it's not even really relative at this point. But your face tells the story. I've been told many times that I would not make a great poker player because my face tells you exactly how I'm feeling. And, and so sometimes I have to be careful about that too, but, but it does. Your face will give away how you're truly feeling. So that's why you need to wash your face. Stop carrying around whatever's happened to you in your past. Mm. My next quote <clears throat> is by Pastor John K. Jenkins. And he says, see, the problem with some of you is you can never reach forward because you're too busy looking at the past. You're still trying to figure out who did what, what they did, how they did it, when they said it, why did this happen to ha have to happen to you? You've got to forget about it. It's over. There is nothing you can do about it. It's history. You can't change the past. You can't do anything about yesterday. Yesterday is gone. Truth be told, this morning is gone. This afternoon, it's gone. There's nothing I can do about that. Anything that I needed to do this morning or this afternoon, if I didn't do it, guess what? It's too late. It is too late. I can't do a thing about it because it's gone. It is gone forever, okay? And I, I'm trying to put things in perspective so you can truly understand what I'm saying. He says, the only thing you can do something about is tomorrow, and you need to be spending the day doing something about what's going to make tomorrow different. And, and again, this is by Pastor John K. Jenkins. So you, all you can do at this point is prepare for tomorrow. Now, remember, I tell you all, tomorrow's not guaranteed to any of us. We hope and pray that we'll be here, but it's not guaranteed at all. But, but what you need to do is spend the rest of today preparing for tomorrow. You sit down with your journal, your your planner, whatever it is that you write in your to-do list and you plan out tomorrow I need to do ABC and XYZ because you want to plan today to have a great tomorrow because yesterday is gone. Mm, come on, somebody. That'll shout you right there. Spend the rest of the day planning out how you're going to make tomorrow a much better day than even today was. Today was a great day for me. I hope it was for you as well. But plan out how you're going to have an even better day tomorrow. Mm. Next quote is by Bishop T.D. Jakes. And he says, you aren't ready for what God has for you now because you're still polluted with what happened to you before. Mm. Come on, somebody. Bishop Jakes also says, I shouldn't be able to to look at you and see your past on your face. Then he says, wash your face. Come on, somebody, that'll shout you. Didn't I just say that a few minutes ago? Nobody should be able to look at you, to look at me or anybody else to see your past on your face. And let me tell you something, if you're around people enough, you can look at folks and tell who's been hurt before because it's gonna show up on their face, it's gonna show up in their body language, it's gonna show up in what they say, what they do, all of that kind of stuff. Wash your face, wash yesterday off, wash your past off. Bishop Jakes also says you can't move forward until you wash the past off of you. Mm. Some of you all are stuck where you are and you're going to remain stuck until you wash the past off you. Forgetting, and then we're reminded of Philippians that says, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. This is from the King James Version. It's Philippians 3 and 13. And then Bishop Jake's last quote says, wash your face until people can no longer look at you and see what you were before. Again, that should shout you. 
that should shout you right up out of your seat. We just need to pass the collection plate, give the benediction, go on home. Wash your face until people can no longer see, I uh, can no longer look at you and see what you were before. Mm. And your takeaway is this, you have to look forward. If you don't start changing your attitude, you will miss your altitude. Y'all, let me just wrap this up and, and, and take it on home because I need to run across the street and get my mom's medicine. But if you're not careful, if you're not careful, your past is going to keep you <clears throat> from some great things. Some of you have some doors that God wants to open up for you, but he can't because he knows that you are still living in the past. And if he opens those doors, you're not only going to to mess up your own blessing, but you're going to hurt other people in the process. What do I mean by that, Michelle? Well, I'm glad you asked. It's, it's just like relationships. Some of you all are in relationships with three different people. And you probably don't even realize it, but you are. You're in a relationship with the person that you're with right now, but you're also stewing and thinking about what the last person did to you. And you're thinking about what the person before that did to you. So you're in a relationship with three different people. Physically, you're in a relationship with the current person, but literally you're in, I mean, figuratively, you're in a did I say that backwards? Literally, you're in a relationship with the person that you're with. Figuratively, you are with the other two people because you keep living your life through what they did to you. And so here's what happens. Eventually, the person that you're with, you're going to drive them away. You know why? Because you're going to say, well, if you're a woman, you're going to say, well, I'm with <clears throat> Bobby. But I remember when Craig was cheating on me with his ex. And I remember when Philip, and I don't know who Craig Philip or, or any of these people are, I'm just making these names up. When I was with Philip, Philip cheated on me with his ex wife. And so you're making, uh, what did I say your current man's name is? I don't know, Bobby. You're making Bobby suffer because you can't let go of what Craig and Philip did to you. And that's not right. Or maybe you're with Alice, but you keep living your life through uh, thinking about what Mary did to you. Well, Alice is not Mary. Mary's not Alice. So Alice shouldn't have to suffer because of what Mary did. But again, you're living in your past. You won't let it go. And that's why your relationship is not, not going to work out. Because here's the thing. The person that you're with they know you're you're being different with them. They may not necessarily know why in the beginning, but they'll figure it out because eventually you're going to tell them the truth. Look, I've been in relationships. I've been hurt. I'm tired of being hurt, this, that, and the third. And they're going to say, well, you know what? I'm not going to keep having to suffer because of what somebody else did to you. I've done nothing to you. I've never hurt you. I would never hurt you. So you cannot make me suffer because of what somebody else did to you it's not fair it's not fair and it's not right and i'm gonna be honest with you all i can raise my hand i'm guilty i am guilty i've done that before where i was in a relationship with somebody and i thought about what this one person did i've only had one person that truly broke my heart and and i kept thinking about what he did and so i made everybody else pay so i like i said i can raise my hand i've messed up quite a few relationships because I could not, I would not, not could not, but I would not let go of what somebody else did. And that wasn't fair to the person I was with. So I do, you know, I, I, I've asked God to forgive me. So I moved on. I'm letting it go because I can't change that. But I did learn from it. I said, Michelle, you've got to stop holding on to what that person did because these people have done nothing to you. All they wanted to do was love you, but you wouldn't give them an opportunity. I was one of those people that if you started getting too close to me, oh, I had to cut you off. It's like, oh, you know what? They're getting too close. They're crossing that 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 boundary that I've set right here. You, you, you're getting too close to the line. So I've got to push you away. I stopped calling. I stopped taking your calls and I probably blocked you because I didn't want to be bothered because you were getting too close. And it made me 
remember again what somebody else did and you had done nothing to me. So I just, I'm sharing all that to say this, stop living in the past. It's time, as my topic says, that you let it go and move on. Let go of, of, of hurt relationships. Let go of that job that didn't work out. Some of y'all are in a job right now and that job is not going to work out because you won't let go of whatever happened on the last job. Whatever happened on that last job, honey, that's in the past. This is a whole new job with all new people, all new coworkers, all that other good stuff. So stop allowing what happened on the old job keep you from being able to, um, to grow in this new job because I don't want you all to miss out on anything that life has to offer because you're living in the past. So guess what? As of right now, we're going to let it go and we're going to move on. And lastly, then I promise I'm going to let you all leave. Remember, I opened up by saying that God wants to bless us. He really does. But some of you all can't, no, you won't let go of the past. And so God is not going to open up doors of new relationships, doors of a new job, doors of financial blessings and whatever else that it is that you may need in your life because he knows you're going to mess it up because you won't let the past go. So I don't want you all to miss out on any of your blessings. So let that old stuff go. Let it go because it, it no longer benefits you or serves you for you to be bitter and angry. Why? Yes, those things happen. I'm sorry you had to deal with them, but don't mess up your, your future because you keep living in the past. Y'all, that's it. That's my time. Hopefully something I said resonates with you and helps you to, to become a better person, to be able to let things go and just move on. It's time for you to be the best you possible, but you can't do that if you won't let go of the past. So having said that, if you're new to watch my videos, I wanna say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is not your first rodeo, I wanna say welcome back. So glad to have you. Y'all know I miss you and I don't get a chance to see you. Go out there, enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a great winning Wednesday, rest of your winning Wednesday. And guess what? I forgot to say this, y'all. It's, it's Wednesday. It's the middle of the week. Two more work days and the weekend is here, unless you have to work weekend, in which case I'm sorry about that. But for the rest of us, two more days, weekend is here, and we can sit back and relax. So I'm so looking forward to the weekend, not rushing the rest of the week, but I am looking forward to the weekend. Again, if you're going out, as always, please be careful. Please be safe. Watch where you're going. Watch who you're hanging out with. If, you, if you're going to be drinking, make sure you line up your Uber. You have a designated driver. If you go someplace, don't you leave with somebody that you didn't come with. Don't you do it. And don't you go anywhere with somebody that you didn't come with. Okay? I want you all to go out there and please be safe. I love you all to the moon and back. You know the drill. You know the spiel. There's nothing you can do about it. Absolutely nothing. Because I love you so much and that will never change. I want to see you all grow. I want to see you win. So whatever it is in your future that's 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 keeping you stuck, I want you to let it go and I want you to move on. I know you're saying, but Michelle, it's not that easy. No, it's not. It's never that easy, but you can do it. If you make up your mind that you want to do it, oh, honey, I promise you, you can do it. Okay. Love you all. If you have not hit that subscribe button, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Tap the bell so you don't miss anything. For you new folks, I do car conversations every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So make sure you come back on Friday for another motivational topic. Again, I love you all and have a great rest of the evening.